Greetings, welcome back to the Hidden History and Biblical Mysteries YouTube channel. Today, our exploration takes a captivating turn as we look into the mainstream narrative surrounding the construction of the Lai Hawaii Temple. As we unravel the connections between the Book of Mormon, the Hawaii Temple, let's delve into the details that shed light on the temple's construction materials and their alignment with the scriptures. In the Book of Mormon, specifically 2 Nephi 5.16, Nephi details the construction of a temple, stating, And I, Nephi, did build a temple. And I did construct it after the manner of the Temple of Solomon, save it were not built of so many precious things. This scriptural reference adds a profound layer to our exploration, emphasizing the scarcity of certain precious materials in the new land. Now, turning our gaze to the Lai Hawaii Temple, we find that it was constructed using native materials, including crushed lava rock and reinforced concrete. The temple's gleaming white finish, achieved through pneumatic stone cutting techniques, stands as a testament to the ingenuity of its builders. Koa wood accents adorn the temple's interior, contributing to its unique and culturally rich design. Importantly, this choice of construction materials echoes the scarcity of precious resources mentioned in the Book of Mormon. The temple builders, faced with a shortage of wood, a scarce commodity on the islands, encountered a fortuitous turn of events. According to Mormon folklore, a ship ran aground, and its cargo of wood became available just in time to complete the temple construction. This aligns with the Book of Mormon's assertion that the temple was not built of so many precious things, as the materials naturally found on the island were utilized in its creation. As we consider these parallels between scripture and historical construction, a thought-provoking narrative emerges. Could the Lai Hawaii Temple indeed be the structure mentioned in the Book of Mormon, crafted by Nephi and his followers? With its construction reflecting the scarcity of certain materials in the new land? This alternative perspective invites us to explore the temple's history with a discerning eye, bridging the gap between scripture and the tangible world. The Lai Hawaii Temple, a significant structure of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, is more than just a modern place of worship. According to the Hidden History Perspective, this temple is a structure of great antiquity, built by Nephi and his followers, as described in the Book of Mormon. The Book of Mormon recounts that Nephi's group constructed a temple after the manner of the Temple of Solomon, save it were not built of so many precious things. This aligns with the design and construction of the Lai Hawaii Temple. Moreover, this perspective suggests that the temple, like many other religious structures found across America, has been repurposed over time. A modern narrative has been assigned to it, potentially to cover up its true antiquity. Most Mormons, like most Christians, believe that the promised land of the Bible is the Middle East. They also believe that Lehi, Nephi, and their brothers left the Middle East and sailed to the Americas. But what if they got it all wrong? What if the Middle East is nothing but a farce, a fictitious land that was created to deceive us? What if the real promised land, the real holy land, is right here in North America? And here's the kicker, the folks we call Mormons, they ain't got no connection to the Jews. No way, no how. The same goes for the people who claim to be Jews today. The real Jews, if we're going by this theory, they have to be the indigenous people of North America. Think about it. Look at Utah, for example. Utah has a river Jordan that flows from a freshwater lake into a salt lake, just like the river Jordan in the Bible. Utah has mountains named Nebo and Pisgah that are about 12,000 feet high, just like the mountainous region of Judah in the Bible. And the name Utah itself, derived from the UT tribe or the Apache name UDA, sounds a lot like Odar, which is how you would say Judah in Hebrew, since there's no J in Hebrew. So, what does this mean? It means that Utah could very well be the real Judah, the real Israel. And the Lai Hawaii Temple, with its construction mirroring the scarcity of certain materials as described in the Book of Mormon, could indeed be the temple that Nephi and his followers built. 
This is not your typical Sunday school lesson, I know. But it's a perspective that challenges us to question what we've been told and explore the possibility of a different story. A story where the real holy land is not halfway across the world, but right here in our own backyard. And where the real Jews are the indigenous people of North America, not the people who claim to be Jews today. All right, let's take this a step further. You see, the book of Revelation, specifically Revelation 2 verse 9 and 3 colon 9 12, has something to say about people who claim to be Jews, but ain't. It says, I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Now, that's some strong language right there, but it's right there in the scripture. So, what does this mean for our theory? Well, it adds another layer to it. If the real Jews are the indigenous people of North America, then those folks who claim to be Jews but ain't, they're the ones the book of Revelation is talking about. They're the ones who've been pulling the wool over our eyes, making us believe that the Holy Land is halfway across the world when it's actually right here in our own backyard. And what about the Mormons? Well, they're in the same boat. They claim a connection to the Jews, but if this theory holds up, they're as far off the mark as the folks in the Middle East. The real Jews, the real Israel, it's not them. It's the indigenous people of North America. The Mormon temple in Utah, a grand structure that rivals any castle in Europe, has a fascinating history. The foundation was laid in 1847, and the cornerstone was set by Brigham Young in 1853. All this, according to the official narrative, of course. The story goes that after a long trek through the wilderness to find the perfect spot for their temple, they decided to travel 20 miles back and forth with oxen hauling blocks that weighed between 2,500 to 1,500 pounds. And then, these horse and buggy folks, they built this magnificent structure. But here's where things get interesting. Because this narrative is just a cover-up. And this temple has been there for thousands of years, probably harnessing free energy. What does this narrative say about the so-called construction of all the temples by religious institutes, especially the Latter-day Saints? What does it say about any of the temples or town halls built in America and their fancy construction that seemed impossible for the time? They were built in. What if the real story is far more extraordinary than we've been led to believe? So, next time you hear someone talking about the Holy Land in the Middle East or the Jews in Israel, remember this theory. Remember the indigenous people of North America, remember Utah, and remember the Lae Hawaii Temple. And most importantly, remember to question what you've been told and explore the possibility of a different story. Because the truth, it might just be stranger than fiction.